Many attempts to conquer the skies have been made throughout history, but not all of them worked. Some are either too expensive to build, or they're about as aerodynamic as a block of wood. Today we're going to take a look at aircraft that failed. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm your host, American Eye, keeping an eye on everything you want to know. Number 13. The Lackner HZ-1 Aerocycle Imagine having your own aerial motorcycle that you could use to fly wherever you felt like. Well, too bad it just didn't work out. In November of 1954, this prototype was first tested out by the U.S. Army by whoever was brave enough to get on it. It was deemed as a personal helicopter that could be operated by pretty much anyone and could have became a state-of-the-art reconnaissance vehicle. The first flight took place at the Brooklyn Army Terminal and it started off promising. They recorded a total of 160 flights with more than 15 hours of flight time. It turned out that it was much harder to fly than anticipated though, and it certainly wasn't for inexperienced pilots. After a free flight of about 45 minutes, the HC-1 was susceptible to crashing. One wrong move and a pilot could get chopped up in the propellers below. It looks pretty dangerous. Number 12. The Dornier Doe during the Cold War, the commanders of NATO got together and attempted to come up with a proper aircraft that could be able to protect Germany in the case of an all-out war. Western Germany, by all means, was an extremely important piece of land during this period of time, and they needed to be well protected. NATO spent millions of dollars attempting to produce an aircraft that can get into the air quickly with as little runway space as possible. Here in this photo, we see the Dornier Doe 31E getting ready for an experimental flight. The first prototype flew in 1967 and continued until 1971. The vertical lift design didn't prove to be too effective for the large plane and ultimately failed. This strange aircraft will be recognized right away by its long needle nose design. Number 11. The H-4 Hercules II Spruce Goose Imagine getting a 200-ton aircraft into the sky that was made completely out of wood. Some call it the world's most famous airplane and this thing is a behemoth. It sits five stories tall and was designed to fit two Sherman tanks inside and possibly 500 soldiers. This was the largest transport seaplane carrier ever built out of wood, but it actually never flew. It gets the name of Spruce Goose, even though it was made from almost entirely birch trees and not spruce. The name was catchy, however. It was designed by the filmmaker Howard Hughes and was made with wood since the army was running low on aluminum. There is only one in existence and it's at the Evergreen Museum in Oregon. It's been described as one of humanity's greatest attempts to conquer the skies, but failed. Number 10. The Dassault Mirage 4000 also nicknamed the Super Mirage 4000, this French prototype jet seems promising at the beginning, but it ultimately failed. It first flew in 1979 and was a similar size to the American F-15 Eagle, being designed both for long-range intercepting and as a fighter bomber. Some had described it as a perfect flying machine with great handling and fast speeds. It was one of the first aircraft to utilize carbon fiber materials in order to keep it lightweight and also feature a fin from that material. During its fifth test flight, it managed to reach a speed of Mach 2 at 50,000 feet in just two minutes. Despite posting some impressive stats, the Dassault Mirage had trouble finding a suitor. The French Air Force didn't want it, Iran didn't want it, and even the Saudis didn't want it. It ultimately failed in finding a buyer, much of the dismay of the French company Dassault, who spent a lot of money on the research and the prototypes. Number 9. The Avro Car VZ-9 the Avro car was designed by a Canadian aircraft company and was part of a U.S. secret Air Force project. This might have been the reason why people have claimed to have seen flying saucers near Area 51. This disliked flying saucer was hoping to be a revolutionary device that wouldn't need a runway to take off. The aircraft was unable to hover like they had planned and before modifications could be achieved, they ran out of funding in 1961. I guess the U.S. won't have a flying saucer in their arsenal, or will they? However, this thing did fly in the sky for about 75 hours, which is quite intriguing. Number 8. The Blue Devil Airship Known for being one of the U.S.'s recently scrapped projects, the Blue Devil Airship was set to be a bizarre-looking blimp the size of a football field for use in Afghanistan. About seven times larger than a Goodyear blimp, it was designed to steal data and spy on people from four miles up in the sky. It had some video systems, which would be used for scoping out targets during the day and at night. It was considered to be a wide-area airborne surveillance system, and the government invested a whopping $211 million into the project. Technical problems kept showing up with overweight tail fins and the expectations of the cameras that were supposed to be equipped were far below what they wanted. In June of 2011, the project was sold back to the contractor for one one thousandth of the price. Number 7. The Christmas Bullet 
Imagine getting into a flying machine during the early 1900s when the idea of flying was still relatively new and aircraft were far from safe. Also known as the cantilever aerobullet, some people have considered this to be the worst aircraft ever made. It was designed by a man named William Whitney Christmas who didn't have any experience designing aircraft, but he claimed to have had a design that would work in 1908. There was no evidence that his design actually worked, but he insisted and eventually started his own airplane business. The single-seat aircraft was made completely from wood. The bullet was powered by a Liberty 6 engine, which would have only been approved for ground vehicles. During its first flight, the wings fell off the fuselage and the aircraft drastically crashed. Despite the crash, the Christmas Bullet continued to campaign for more funding. Number 6. The McDonnell XF-85 Goblin Imagine keeping a small plane inside another plane and then dropping it instead of a bomb. It would certainly surprise the enemies. That's what the Americans had in mind when they designed this aircraft known as a parasite fighter. This idea didn't really seem too useful, however, and the army decided to melt down these fighters and they weren't put to use. Only two prototypes were created and they were deemed as unsafe to the pilots. Since it was so small, it would have been considered to be quite inferior to enemy aircraft and the idea was abandoned. They were more focused on designing something that could refuel the bombers instead of a mini plane. Still a cool concept either way, and the two were still on display, one in Ohio and one in Nebraska. Number 5. Blackburn Botha The Blackburn Botha was a British four-seater aircraft used for reconnaissance and as a torpedo bomber. Or that's what it was supposed to do at least. It was made by Blackburn Aircraft and went into service during the second global conflict. Since Great Britain seemingly needed as much aircraft as possible during the time, they might have decreased their standards just a little bit, and such is the case for the Blackburn Botha. During service testing, kind of like your ex-girlfriend, it proved to be very unstable and had some serious problems. Despite having some success dropping torpedoes and mines, it didn't really seem to get the job done most of the time. During combat and on patrols, they might have carried a little bit too much weight on them and it would lead to crashes in 1940. About 580 of them were made and the production ended in 1944. Number 4. The Ferry Battle While the British are known for making some of the best aircraft, they've made quite a few failures as well. The Ferry Battle was not a fight between mythical creatures, but actually a single-engine light bomber design. It was created in the 1930s for the Royal Air Force and utilized a high-performance Rolls-Royce engine that powered some successful aircraft for the British. But it didn't work out all too well for this one. The battle was a very heavy plane holding on a three-man crew and a heavy bomb load. Once it went up against extremely well-designed German fighter aircraft, it was like shooting fish in a barrel. Nearly 100 battle aircraft were shot down in only a week. They were hopefully pitiful when it came to defending themselves and it eventually led to some better designs. Many of them were scrapped or used for target practice later on. Number 3. The Ferry Rotodyne Another failed aircraft by Ferry was the Ferry Rotodyne, which was a large hybrid rotorcraft known as a compound gyroplane, aka a gyrodyne. It held the distinction of being one of the largest transport helicopters back in its day when it was designed in 1957. Eventually, it would be able to hit a world record for the fastest moving convertiplane, moving at a speed of 190 miles per hour. It managed to be impressive to viewers at several air shows in Paris and in the UK. So what was it that made the Rotodyne fail? One well, of the most notable problems was that it made a lot of noise and required a lot of power and fuel to operate. The noise reduction program was put into place, but the effort would prove to be unsuccessful as other helicopter programs seemed to be going more smoothly at the time. In any case, some believe the project was just too costly to keep it going and the project was abandoned in 1962. Number 2. The Messerschmitt ME163 Comet The Third Reich had a need for speed, but that doesn't always translate into a successful aircraft. During the final days of the German Empire, they released one of their secret weapons to hopefully intercept American or British bombers with one of these. It's known as the Messerschmitt ME163 Comet and it utilized rocket power to make it go 100 miles an hour faster than any Allied plane. The only problem though was that it expended fuel extremely fast and a full tank would burn up in just 3 minutes. That was hopefully enough time for them to seek and destroy enemy aircraft and then get back down to base, hopefully. That was the hardest part about flying one of these and the aircraft would rely on gliding with its own power to land. It was extremely aerodynamic and fairly easy to produce. Another major downside to it though was the glue that was holding it together would seemingly come off and it needed to be more careful. Number 1. Boeing Failures The aircraft manufacturer Boeing has had a long hidden history of failures and finally it's catching up to them. An international flight safety panel found failures in the US Federal Aviation Administration and Boeing in regards to their 737 passenger plane. The flight control system was to blame for the cause of two crashes in Indonesia and in Ethiopia which led to 364 fatalities recently. 
This might cause many flights to be delayed, many angry passengers, and cost Boeing a lot of money to fix everything. Whoa, now that was a cool video. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.